and I guess the way you would uh, want to think about our new firm, which we started about a year and a half ago, is uh, we're looking to sort of evolve the integration of fundamental investing with quantitative process. Th does the math geek yep. thing, yep. right? Um, we believe that the way in which you um, manage to sustain alpha delivery from the fundamental process is to pair it with the disciplined understanding of what's happening in the markets via all those quantitative tools, right? And so we've made a very significant investment on our platform, all the massy bits that mm -hmm. go with it, and a world-class uh, fundamental team to sort of look to evolve that process, right? So, so what is a quant strategy? And then how does that mesh with fundamentals? So that's the whole point of quants was because you didn't have to worry about the fundamentals. <laughs> Yeah, so I think the you want to think in alpha space, um, if you're looking to deliver alpha, um, as opposed to just take risk, right? Um, I think the objective of the quant side and the fundamental side is essentially the same, right? Which is you're looking for a differentiated view about the prospects of a firm. And I think the difference tends to be that in quantitative land, you're looking to get that differentiated view via taking advantage of very high breadth, right? So you look for some subtle bit of data that tells you have very little bit about many firms, right? And so you, you essentially create what people would use a factor, where a little bit of information helps you make a small bet across, I don't know, a thousand stocks, right? Russell 1000 in the US or something, right? Whereas on the fundamental side, you're looking for the same thing, a differentiated view, but there you are much more focused on um, the idea that a human has the ability to come to understand a level of subtle detail about an individual firm at real depth, mm. Um, that you couldn't get if you tried to do it sort of automatically across all the firms, right? So you focus on maybe 20, maybe 30 firms, and you'd spend your life literally thinking about these firms, mm -hmm. right? And so it's a breadth versus depth thing, right? Um, we think that in a sense you could put the both of our worlds together, right? There are many firms out there who do each of these well. We think that putting them together um, actually is sort of the right way of actually thinking about it. There's no reason why they can't be together other than it's hard. You need two types of expertise, you need the management, you need the systems, you know, all these things. So it is hard to put them together, but we believe you can, and that that leads to sustainable alpha, essentially, quote, from both sides. So I'm a former equity research analyst, so covering the media space, let's say I come in one day and say, got to buy the Walt Disney Company here today, but the black box says sell it. <laughs> How does, what happens then? Mm. Um, I think in, you would like to think that in most cases that situation doesn't arise, right? And the reason why it shouldn't arise is because that last step that you talk about, right, which is I want to buy this stock, mm -hmm. should occur on the back of a traceable disciplined investment process, right? So by the time you come to me and say I want to buy this stock, presumably we would have had a conversation or in the tooling you would have spent a whole bunch of time going to conferences, talking to firm management, uh, you know, building a financial model and putting estimates out there such that your conclusion, I want to buy this stock, sort of naturally flows from all the notes that you've done, all the work that you've done, the, your, let's say you're producing estimates for earnings and earnings is next week, mm -hmm. let's say. Mm -hmm. uh, your estimates are higher than the street, right? I think the street is missing something, right? And here's all the work that backs that up, but therefore I want to buy it, right? And so in that context, the quote black box, is essentially all the tooling that helps you do that, right? So all the signals, the data that informs all the modeling that you do. It could be everything from satellite data that tells you how many cars were mm -hmm. parked in front of whatever the shops are. Essentially, they work together. So by the time that decision happens, there's no sort of separation, essentially, mm -hmm. or there shouldn't be at least, right? So it's not something that we actually worry very much about okay. because if you put it together properly, in a sense, the conclusion falls out from, from sort of having that traceable work, if you will. So you were here, you just did a panel, um, and the panel name was The Right Mix of Humans and Machines. So yes. it's going to be about using AI in this model. Correct. How Have you found a good balance? How are you thinking about that balance? Yeah, I guess um, that sounds uh, kind of a trite thing to say, but um, the, the answer is basically it depends. Right? It depends on the thing, right? Um, um, we like to make a distinction between automation questions, right, where the technology AI now, but in the past it would have been machine learning, neural networks, you know, data science of all kinds. It's evolved into uh, being able to take on more of this kind of unstructured data stuff on the, on the language side. But it's an evolution of the same, right? And we find that for automation tasks, the more you can push on things that are 
sort of not inside generation, right? Not where mm -hmm. the idea comes from, but just automating the tasks. Um, it's quite effective, and uh, we generally have been um, sort of big believers that you want to invest in your ability to do that. On the judgment side, which is, will AI help me produce better insight, like actually mm -hmm. a differentiated idea, we've been significantly more cautious on that end. And the reason for it is if you think about how AI is um, built out, it's you feed it all this documentation, and it produces essentially a probabilistic uh, forecast of what is the next word in a sentence, or you know, people use the word token, right? Next sentence, next individual word, et cetera. It is essentially built, if you, in our parlance, you would call it, it's built to produce a consensus, mm -hmm. right? You ask it a question, and right. the answer to that question comes from, here's all the documents about this topic, and the average answer, quote, the most likely answer is this. So it's That's not differentiated. Correct. That's the problem. And so in asset management, when you're interested in a differentiated view, AI is inherently not built for that, or at least not, quote, out of the box, right? So you need to think much more carefully about how do I use that as a starting point for thinking about summarization questions, directing attention, detecting themes, measuring sentiment, all very useful things that might lead you to have a better insight, but it's not insight generation itself, right? And so then the topic really sort of matters, right? Is it writing code for the engineers? Eh, maybe not so much, but is it... Um, the ability to summarize a huge amount of data, you know, you were an equity analyst, right? Part of the job is you show up in the morning and there's like a million things to read, mm -hmm. right? There's all the sell side analysts, all the transcripts from conferences, all the news about the company, right? Just the act of reading is a big deal, right? So you can imagine how AI might be helpful in directing attention and highlighting new emerging themes, etc. You probably still want to be reading at least some of the key pieces of it mm -hmm. because you would worry about where the insight comes from as opposed to where the summarization comes from. Does that sort of make sense? Yes, yep. actually. Yeah. Real quickly, 30 seconds. How have some of the early returns been for your firm? Oh, this we, we've been doing sort of about what we planned. We did, you call me a math nerd, yeah. we, did quite a, <laughs> we did quite a lot of simulation about how the things should work when we started going, right? What sort of returns with what assumptions. And we're basically tracking to what we would have expected at, at this point. What's, what's your benchmark? No benchmark, right? We bark in neutral. We are perfectly hedged to, in our case, S&P 500. We also take no factor risk. And so essentially the benchmark is our ability to deliver uncorrelated returns to the other benchmarks is essentially how you think about right. it. Does AI, real quick before we go, does AI stress you out? In what way might AI stress you out? It doesn't stress me out. It's it kind doesn't of, stress you out, okay. No, no, it's kind of exciting, right? Okay. Uh, new things are always exciting.